VR Hyperspace is a really cool project. What we've been looking at is investigating virtual reality in future aircraft. And the reason we talk about future aircraft is at the beginning of this project in 2011, virtual reality was still not, you know, people didn't think about virtual reality anymore, even though it's been around for like over 30 years. And virtual reality wasn't necessarily in favor. We were looking at virtual reality for future aircraft for passenger comfort because we thought we had a great idea. We thought if you could use virtual reality to extend the space in an aircraft or you could use it to make you feel comfortable, so believe that you're more comfortable, then that would be a really, really like cool thing to do. So I am definitely an absolute sci-fi nut. <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm a Trekkie, but I've been known to be called a Trekkie and absolutely the whole idea of the holodeck, flying yeah. in space, everything about that is, has led me to be the scientist that I have been. My brain's telling me, I know that there is nothing here, but visually because I can see all these people around, I do want to try and get out like this. I've always been absolutely fascinated by the fact that you could enter into this computer world and be anywhere you want to be. Industry very much used virtual reality where you couldn't have people in a real environment. So you can understand why the space industry used virtual reality because obviously you can't send loads and loads of people up in space. So much of the research has been about creating accuracy in a virtual environment. Can we make the space in reality and virtual environments map accurately. But now it's interesting for you, the voice and the avatar is co-located. So we said, well, okay, what happens if we don't want it to map accurately? What if we want to use the space research to actually make the space bigger? So can we use virtual environments to make the space bigger? So in an aircraft, when you're in a really confined space, can we use virtual environments to extend that space? So this is where the research has been for the last three years. And comfort has been a really, really complicated thing because people have so many different ideas and opinions of what makes them comfortable. So there are problems, there will always be problems when you look at technology. The biggest problem that virtual reality has, interestingly, is to do with the stereo. So one of the problems with actually having stereo vision, so in a head-mounted display, for example, you have to have two different images to your eye in order to make the stereo happen. And some people experience this already when they're looking at 3D movies, where you're, you've got the glasses, you're trying to work out and make the stereo happen. Now, some people in a head-mounted display with the stereo and with motion can actually experience sickness. Now sickness is a real issue because obviously we wouldn't want loads of people wearing head-mounted displays and feeling sick. We also don't want loads of people wearing head-mounted displays for, for a long time getting eye strain. So actually we're a human factors research group Part of the reason we started in virtual reality was to actually look at the technology. We were a beta test site way back in time to look at the issues related with virtual reality and the long-term use of these technologies. Which is why when we were doing the project VR Hyperspace, we had psychologists and neuroscientists all trying to understand comfort. But that was very much to do comfort with this the technology we were using as well as comfort in terms of like what people were seeing. So, you know, there are lots of problems, there always are with technology and, you know, science shouldn't be afraid of actually looking at them and science shouldn't be afraid of saying them. Sickness is a problem that has to be studied and has to be overcome. And we have to have a slightly more to stand still. Yeah, stand still and close your eyes. So it's been a real challenge, but really interesting to see what you can do in terms of changing people's environments to increase their comfort. One approach has involved using head-mounted displays. So head-mounted displays block the whole world out and only allow you to use whatever virtual environment we're showing. So that's great because you can put people in an extended space, you can put them in a comfortable space, you can put them anywhere you want to. And we've been using head-mounted displays to look at how you would embody yourself in that space, what if you believed that the avatar that you are in that virtual environment is you, can we make you feel more comfortable? 
Uh, the other approach we've been looking at is actually putting displays in surfaces around you. So we have a couple of demonstrators. One is a cabin environment where we've put loads of displays on the back of seats, on the floor, on the sides, and we've looked at how you can extend that space by making all the seats invisible or taking the plane away and to see whether people A, are comfortable with being in an invisible plane and do they feel like they're in an extended space. And the other system we're looking at is a multi-user, multi-viewer system. So it's actually about shared spaces. That's using really, really large scale displays, but it's using cameras in order to beam other people into that space so that you can have a shared experience. So we're creating positive illusions. And what we mean by this is we are using virtual environments to enable passengers to see themselves in a much more comfortable position than maybe they are in the real world. We're also using virtual environments to extend the actual environment, so in their cabin space, or if they really want to be outside of the plane, to put them in an alternative reality, an alternative space which is much more comfortable. And also to allow them to interact with other people, so people they want to interact with. Because you can imagine on a plane, you might be with other people who you don't know, who you may not want to know, and you might want to interact with people from home and so they can be brought into your shared space. Maybe you want to read your children a bedtime story and you're on the plane. You can still physically or virtually be in the same place. You can be into their bedroom or they can come onto the plane and you can still be that person and read the story.